Welcome back. Part 9 of my cargo trailer to camper conversion. So in this uh, video, it's one I've kind of been looking forward to. We're going to raise it, lift it, I'm going to flip the axle, I'm going to put it underneath the springs. I'm going to install brakes. It has no brakes on the axle right now, so I've got these little weld-on brackets that I'm going to install. Got perches, spring perches to install. We'll talk about that later. Then I've got my brakes and my new bearings. So why I didn't just order an axle is because of the width. I couldn't find one that was close to the same width. And uh, if I were to get it custom made, it would cost a fortune. So all of this, including the shock kit that I'm putting on, it costs me about $325 for everything. So that's, that's pretty good and I'll have basically a brand new axle under there. So let's get started, I'll explain why I'm doing this. Uh, you can see the crown clearance, is, it's actually pretty good, it's not bad even just stock. Because uh, like underneath the body itself, I think we've got about 16 inches. Underneath the frame you're looking about 13 inches, so the lowest part here. Uh, 13 inches which is not bad but I still want more clearance because we're going to be doing a lot of off-road uh, camping so here's the existing axle right now you can see under there you can see it's got no brakes and the perches are on the bottom so what I'm going to do you can't just flip the axle because if you can see there's a crown in the axle and that's what gives you your camber so you need you need camber to keep the, the trailer going down the road straight so the the wheels are actually angled out just a little bit as you can see from that crown so that's why you can't just go and flip the axle around because then you'd have a negative camber right now you got positive camber so i've got those weld on perches i'm going to weld on some perches in there and then i'm going to weld on those brackets for the brakes so how I was going to do that is I'm going to take it all down, strip this axle right down, and then assemble the, I'm going to slide the weld on brake um, bracket, and then I'm going to put the brake on it, I'm going to bolt the brake onto it, and then I'm going to bolt the uh, bearing assembly, the drum assembly on, and then I'm going to use that to figure out where I need to weld that bracket on. and then I'll weld on the spring perches. But I think I'm going to start, I'm going to weld on the brakes first and then the spring perches after. So let's get started. So the axle looks good. The bearings have not spun at any time. I know because I've, I've always uh, kept it fairly well maintained. So it looks like a little bit of water did get in here, but that's okay, no big deal. The bearing surface feels really good. There's no grooves. Same where the seal surface is, it's not bad. So I just cleaned it up with um, a wire brush and you know what this mount they, they gave me, it actually fits right on there perfectly. So that's great. There's no play even either way. So that must be the spot. It kind of makes sense, right? Because they're not going to make a separate axle for one that's for brakes, one for not brakes. They're going to make the same axle but they're just not going to mount on the flange or they will mount on the flange. So. That's good, this will be a nice easy job to do. So I've got the trailer level, trailer's level, and now I'll just level my uh, bracket here. I've got my little handy magnet level here. So I'll level that bracket and then get that welded on and then drop the, drop the spring, weld on the perch. Here we go, I got the axle down. I just ended up cutting the U-bolts uh, that hold the perch onto the springs. So again, I'm not a professional welder, but it's okay, it'll be on there solid. I, I welded both sides of the plate. I also put a little bit of that anti-splatter stuff, you know, nozzle dip, 
around where the seal was going to go and the bearing was going because on the other side I had a little bit of splatter get on there and it was a pain to get off. So I'm going to just clean up where this new perch is going to go here. I'm going to measure the di distance between here and the new perch and make sure they're the same on both sides and weld it on. Pretty simple. So that's our axle all done up there. Got my brake plate on, my uh, mount for my, my spring, both sides. Thought I'd paint it while it's all off here. So now I'm just gonna put it back on. What I'm using for shocks is just this uh, shock kit I bought off of Amazon. It's for 3,500 pound axles and it's got these plates on the bottom. So those plates get mounted like that. Whoops. On, I'm gonna put the shocks on the inside obviously. I don't have enough room on the outside. And then it's got uh, some U-bolts and then these brackets up here that mount to the top. They slide up onto the, onto the box frame. And then these are the shocks that are going in. Here's my setup. This is how I worked uh, this bracket in here for the shocks. Uh, I had a hard time because they give you these U-bolts, right? But you could put them in like that, but then it would be all right if the spring was on the bottom. But if I put the spring back on the bottom, I'll lose my clearance. And also it would be too close here for the shock between the shock and the frame. There wouldn't be enough travel for that shock. So I needed to have this thing on the bottom. I couldn't put it at the top. And uh, I could have probably got U-bolts made up, those little square ones that go across the spring and then back down, rather than the round U-bolts that go over the axle. But I thought this would be a good fix, fairly easy. So these are grade five bolts, 120,000 PSI. I've torqued them to 75 foot pounds, and then I used a little bit of Loctite on them, blue Loctite on the bottom, and then double nutted it. So I've got two, two nuts on the bottom that'll stop it from moving. So I think it's locked in there pretty solid, especially for such a light little trailer. And now I got to position my shock. I got to figure out what angle to put this shock at over here. It's actually the shock they want to go this way, but uh, I just don't think that'll be very good. It'll be laying down too much. This way I think it'll be more protected behind the axle than if I were to run it the other way, but we'll see how it all works out. Okay, let's just talk about how we're going to figure out where this is going to go. Actually, it goes like that. The top shock mount for our cargo trader, adding our shocks to it. So what they say is to take the shock, fully compress it, and then mark it. So this mark here, this I just used some tape. That's the fully compressed shock. Then they said to go all the way full open and then measure the difference between here and here and then put a mark in the middle. So this is halfway of that compression. Then they said to add two inches to it and that's right about there. So that is where the shock, where you're gonna want it to sit, right there when it's installed. So that still gives it some room to go up and then also to be compressed. So it'll give you the compression and the rebound properly. So I just compress it to there and I'll, then I'll take a measurement from the top of the shock to the bottom of the shock. And then I'll use that measurement to figure out where I'm going to place this bracket where that, that shock fits through. So I'm a little bit disappointed with this kit. It's supposed to be um, just a bolt in kit but there's no way it needs to be modified a bit, especially for this type of trailer, which is a, a lower clearance. Maybe if you had a big, uh, like a huge RV, it might work, but then this is only for a 3,500 pound axle anyways, so I'm not sure. Anyways, what I found is this bracket here where the upper shock mount, it should be at an angle. The lower one's at an angle, it's like this, but this one, if you put it in like this, the shock goes through the bolt hits this back bracket here so I could have notched out this back bracket but I figured what I'd do is I just cut the top ear off this and rotate it like that so then I'll have it in there like that that'll angle my bracket 
and then they only give you four bolts anyways so I don't know why it had well without ear cut off it would have been five bolts but I'm pretty sure four of these uh, these bolts are going to be able to hold it in no problem I was thinking about just welding the bracket in but I, I thought well if I change my shocks to a different type of shock or in the future I want to move it it'd be nice just to be able to unbolt it uh, weld up the holes and move it so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to just stick this in there like that bolt it in and what I did I'll just show you what I did with the shock So I just put some of these tie straps around it to get it to the right length, whereabouts I want it. And that way it allows me just to test fit it and move it around without it keep on, it keeps on extending. So that'll, that helps just to line everything up. A couple tie straps to hold it in there. Okay, let's put this bracket on. Here's the finished product. So I ended up cutting off most of the bolts. <laughs> I'm only using three here, but I think that's enough, especially for a shock. But you could see the angle, like this, this plate here ends right here. So if you didn't turn to match this bottom one, uh, I don't know how it would work. So anyways, now that's chopped off. I chopped off quite a bit of that bracket at the top and it's sucked up there nice. It's got the amount of clearance I need for my shock both ways so it won't bottom out on the shock. And I think it'll be all right. I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to grind it off here. This is what it looks like done. So I got my insulation back up here. Just reattached it. I'm going to have to caulk the cracks, but that's okay. Good travel on the shock. Cut off the bolt at the bottom just so it's not going to catch any rocks or anything. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to... Uh, mask off that shock and spray paint this this leaf spring and everything now and then put on my brakes so for the brakes it's pretty straightforward uh, it's usually cheaper just to buy the whole unit I think I paid these were on sale I think they were $59 for the the whole thing but uh, there's a right and a left you can tell they're marked on the back see the L there so that's looking to the front of the vehicle. If you're standing at the back looking to the front, left on your left hand side. So that goes over here on the driver's side. And that's just so that this operates the right way. Like when you're driving forward, the wheel's turning like this. Once this engages, it pulls the brakes, brakes on. I've got my hub on here. I just had that on here while I was moving the axle around so I didn't damage the spindle at the end. So I'm going to take that off, put this on, comes with some lock nuts, and then once I get that on, then we'll repack and install the bearings. So when I repack the bearings, what I do, well first of all I took and I just lightly sanded where the seal goes on the spindle here. So that's lightly sanded just to get rid of the rust and stuff off of it. Now you can pack bearings fairly easy by hand. Um, if you just take the bearing, you just put a little bit of grease in your hand and then you just hold the bearing and you roll it into the grease. And that way it forces the grease up through and it comes out the top of the bearing. And you just roll the bearing as you're going and you just keep forcing that grease into the bearing. Once the bearing's packed all the way around, you can, uh, then what I do is I just put a, th a thin layer of grease on the inside in here to keep the rust from building up in here, put a thin layer on the bearing surface, and then drop it in. For the seal itself, I like to pack this whole cavity on the back of the seal with grease. It holds the little garter spring in. And then I just use a driver seal driver to to put that seal in but you could use a socket or a pipe you could use all, all sorts of different things whatever gets it in there and gets it flat in the on the bearing surface or on the seal surface um, if you're repacking bearings you got to make sure that they're all the old grease is out because uh, some grease is not compatible with other grease 
So yeah, whether you use gas or um, brake clean, whatever, just clean it all out. Then you blow dry it to get all the solvent out of it. Uh, when you're blow drying it though, make sure you don't go over top of the bearing where it starts spinning the bearing at a really high rate of speed because you can damage the bearings while you're spinning them. So just hold on to it, blow all the, the grease out of it, the old grease, then clean it out again, then blow out all the solvent. Then you'll have a nice clean bearing to start with. So I'll just show you quickly how I pack this. I've got an actual bearing packer so it's a, a lot quicker. Basically I just stick it in there and stand on it and it uh, packs the grease into it. But I'll just show you if, you if you're at home doing this by hand, this is how I would do it. And normally I'd have gloves, I just don't have any latex gloves right now. So, so I just take a little bit of grease, put it in the palm of your hand, you take your bearing, and you just roll your bearing into it. Just t It's like you're taking off little bites of the grease. And you just do that. Keep doing it until you start to see the grease coming out of the top of the bearing. Whoops. Do you see how it's coming right out of there? I don't know if I can get it to focus. So it's coming right out of the bearing there. That's good. Now I'll roll it and continue on. And I'll do that. I'll just continue packing that all in there and then put a little thin layer on the top. Okay, that's it. Bearings are packed. Pretty easy to do. Now I'm going to put the, the bearing, the hub, onto the spindle and uh, the bearing and then the nut. What I do, uh, if since this is new, it's good to just preload the bearings. It helps everything seat just to make sure it's seat, uh, seated well. So I'll put it on, I'll do it up finger tight and then I will do it an extra quarter turn. And that quarter turn puts a little bit of pressure on the races and on the bearings. It helps if it's new, if it's new. If it's old, like if I was just repacking this, I would just uh, I wouldn't have to preload the bearings. So what I do is I just put it together, uh, finger tight, and then throw the cotter pin on. So what I'm going to do with this one since it's new, putting it together, uh, finger tight, quarter turn to preload the bearings, turn the wheel about ten times, then back that off completely, then finger tight, then cotter pin. So in the end, it's always only going to be finger tight. There's no pressure put on these bearings. They're not like you, um, a wheel bearing or something for a car. It's all good now. I sealed it up. I put in uh, four screws along the bottom here, then I sealed it, and then I undercoated it. So now no water's getting in there. So it's all done. I'm going to put the tires on now. We'll take some measurements just to show you the difference. Okay, that's it. So it's all done. That's level right now. You can see the clearance. It's pretty good. I think it's got more clearance than my truck now. So I'm hoping to, to put uh, 31 inch tires in there. Maybe 32 inch tires. We'll see. After these wear out, of course. All right, so just to you know, idea. So at the beginning, I think it had 13 inches of clearance. Now we're at 18 inches. So 18 inches to the bottom of that, the lowest part of the frame, 21 to the frame, 21. So that's it, we're all done. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more to come.